All right, so if we're talking about which position groups have the most to figure out, and that's exactly what we're talking about here on Roster Review, right? With Craig Riolu, Danny Sarek, Darren Urban, yours truly, Paul Calvisi. I would say that defense features the top three position rooms with the most to figure out. And Darren, I'll start with you in defensive line because we all know what's not in that room. Zach Allen and J.J. Watt. That's 18 of the team's 36 sacks from a year ago. Yeah, and I, I would think that when you talk about the defensive line, the first thing you're thinking of is where's the playmaker? And, and I don't know if they're necessarily going to have that guy. They have people that have the background to potentially do it. They signed LJ Collier, who's obviously a former first round pick. They've liked some of the things Rashard Lawrence has done in the past. They signed Carlos Watkins from the Cowboys, who's had a pretty solid career and, and somebody who the Cowboys wanted to bring back. Uh, among a group of people that I, I think at this point, I think it's fair to say, you're not really sure who's gonna come out of that in the regular rotation, because I, I think they're all literally gonna be competing all the way through camp. And then just who's healthy, because if you look at the most successful defensive linemen that are returning from last season, Rashard Lawrence, we haven't seen him at all this off season. Jonathan Ledbetter, we haven't seen him at all this off season as far as on field work. They've both been working out on the side because of injuries suffered at the end of last season. So I do agree, Paul, there's a lot of unknown and a lot of opportunity for players yeah. in that room. It is the land of opportunity. If you're day three rookie Dante Stills or undrafted rookie Jacob Slade out of Michigan State. So Danny, I guess that means they're going to need more production off the edge and the outside linebackers getting to the quarterback. Which means you're going to be looking at Zayvon Collins, who has made the move from inside to outside, although Collins has said it's nothing crazy for him. He played 30% of the snaps outside last season. Defensive coordinator Nick Rollis, as well as outside linebacker Dennis Gardeck, have talked about how Zayvon Collins has the ability to be a monster outside, not just because of his size, also his intelligence. Rollis has said that the biggest difference moving from inside to outside is using your eyes, and that Zayvon Collins has that ability to move inside to outside and, and really be a force for them. When you look outside of Zayvon Collins, who doesn't have a ton of experience there to begin with, the rest of your depth is also inexperienced. Dennis Gardeck has played a larger role on special teams the last couple of years. Cam Thomas and Myjay Sanders, although they had some production last year, are only entering their second year. The rookie BJ Ojolari, we haven't seen him on the field this offseason. We're not quite sure what exactly he's dealing with, but it's a question at this point whether or not he's even going to be out on the field for training camp. So you're going to have to rely on Zayvon Collins and also some coverage to try and force your opposing quarterback to hold onto the ball a little longer. And I'll say, Paul, that it's interesting to me that as we sit here uh, going into the, the break before training camp, that we're sitting here saying the Cardinals are going to have to hope that a guy who's never played outside edge rusher, and the 30% he played last year on the edge was for rundowns. It wasn't for pass downs. That's going to be your top pass rusher. I, I give them big credit for going in the draft and taking Victor D. Mukherjee and My J. Sanders and Cameron Thomas and B.J. Ojolari and saying we're, we're going to try and throw things at it and, and see hopefully somebody step forward, but you need somebody to step forward. Jonathan Gannon last year's defensive coordinator of the Eagles, they led the NFL in sacks and basically didn't blitz. I'm thinking this could be quite different this year. The Cardinals could be needing to dial up numbers to get to the quarterback. We'll see. Zavin was the middle linebacker last year. This year, it's Kaiser White. He is the quarterback of this defense, and he has a lot of knowledge of this scheme. He told reporters when he arrived that he feels very at home here because of the familiarity with this defense. Jonathan Gannon, Nick Rollis, both were in Philadelphia where Kaiser White was a year ago playing for the Eagles. But this room looks a lot different. Ezekiel Turner is the only returning inside linebacker now that Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons have moved elsewhere. So it's a lot of new bodies but there's a lot of special teams in there as far as Josh Woods is concerned, Chris Barnes, you got your Owen Papo who was a late round draft pick. So my guess is depending on what else happens at defensive line and outside linebacker, you might be able to get away with just a Kaiser White being the quarterback of the defense. And there's no doubt he, he has the most knowledge on that side of the ball. Uh, and there's also no doubt, at least to me, that cornerback is the other area you have the most to figure out. You know how it works in the NFL, Darren. You better have three and ideally four. Where do you think the Cardinals are in that equation? I think they've got enough numbers to have four. Uh, we'll, we'll see kind of where that goes. I, I, I think it's incredible for, for me right now. The question is, who's your number one? Even? Who's that guy that you think to yourself, if we really need a, a stop, who can we put it on? I'm sure Marco Wilson believes he can be that guy. I'm wondering if Antonio Hamilton also believes he can be that guy. 
But I can't sit here and say for sure that those two guys are even gonna be your starters when we get to the regular season and not because of maybe what they do, but again, new staff, we don't know what they're looking for. All, just like wide receiver, all the cornerbacks that they've acquired, save for a couple of draft picks, uh, are taller cornerbacks. So they obviously want bigger guys, but you've got Garrett Williams, who's the third round pick, who you're hoping can step in at some point coming off the ACL tear and perhaps give you something this season. Uh, Keetra Clark, the sixth round pick, who a lot of people seem to like, but can you get a six round pick in there and have him make an immediate impact? I mean, again, they've got a bunch of candidates. Who emerges, I think we're a long way from knowing that. Yeah, there's two sorts of cornerbacks, those who are younger than Nick Rollis and those who are older than Nick Rollis. Antonio Hamilton is the one guy who's older. He said, he said that was a little jarring for him when he came in. He's actually older than his defensive coordinator. We haven't mentioned Isaiah Simmons yet, Danny, and that's because he's with the safeties again this year. The safeties might be arguably the strongest unit on defense when you've got Isaiah Simmons, Jalen Thompson, and Buda Baker. Yes, Buda Baker did request a trade earlier in the offseason. However, Baker still has two years left on his deal. He did show up for a mandatory minicamp. He was in the building, rather, was not out on the field. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not Baker participates out on the field for training camp. I do expect Baker to play this year. I, I don't think it's realistic to think that he has enough leverage to have a hold in or to not play at all. Um, so I do expect Baker, the five-time Pro Bowler, to be out on the field with Jalen Thompson and Isaiah Simmons, who, although we've known that he has really just been a DB, that's where Simmons played a lot of his snaps last season as the nickel cornerback. That's where Simmons has been practicing throughout the offseason. He did confirm it to the media around minicamp that he is working with the defensive backs. Simmons won't be moving, it doesn't seem like at least, moving between linebacker and safety. And, and Simmons has said himself he wants to master this position. His fifth round option was not picked up by the Cardinals this offseason. He's playing in a contract year. So I would imagine that's probably part of the reason why you want to master one position is so you can really show the Cardinals and the rest of the league what you're capable of doing. And if you're going to play all three of those on the field, if those are three of your top 11, then maybe you can get away with the cornerback situation as far as who is going to be on the field playing corner because if you've got Isaiah Simmons in the slot or Jalen Thompson or Buda Baker up near the line of scrimmage, your best 11 might include three safeties. Well, Isaiah Simmons' highest percentage of snaps last year was at slot corner. I'll also say that we've heard before Isaiah Simmons is going to specialize at one spot. He ends up playing like four or five. So we'll see if the coaches are sandbagging on that one or not. Um, that's just There's a bit of a history on that one. All right, special teams. Yes, I have a soft spot in my heart for those who I share the back of the sideline with, the specialists. We have a legitimate punter battle, do we not, between Nolan Cooney and the veteran out of ASU, Matt Hawk, who's, what, six years in the league, has nearly 100 games experience. I mean, Darren, come on, you're around this team every day. When are you going to get around to writing the specialist battle? We, we've had three long snappers already in camp. We have had three long snappers, although I think part of that was because Aaron Brewer, the veteran, is coming back from an injury. But we won't get too deep into that right now, Paul. Okay. I'm All just right. happy for you for your puncher battle. <laughs> and, right. and Nolan Cooney's a, a good kid, and, and I do think he's got a chance to win this. But obviously, Hawks got the experience in, uh, in, in trying to replace him. Andy Lee. Remember, Jonathan Gannon says everything is a competition, right down to the special teams. He also called the offseason pajama ball. That all comes to an end with Cardinals camp. First open practice for fans July 27th. You need digital tickets to attend. It's still free. Just go to azcardinals.com. For Craig Rielu, Danny Sarek, Darren Urban, I'm Paul Calvisi. That has been your defensive side of the roster review.